Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, I've got something very exciting to do on my RV, and that is to make life easier with a solar grid, solar panel, and charge controller install. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So here are some of the things you're going to need to complete this install. First and foremost, you're going to need your solar panel. All right. Um, some solar panels come with Z brackets, some don't. Make sure you order some Z brackets for a solar panel if you do not have those. You're also going to need some MC4 connectors. That way you can connect your solar panel to your MC4 connector through the ceiling. Another thing you're going to need is some wiring to go from your charge controller to your battery. Speaking of charge controller, you're going to need a charge controller. There are different options for charge controllers. I will post links in the description below for the ones that I think are the best budget option that are solid quality and provide exactly what you need. Another thing you're going to need is some lag bolts. Um, roofing lag bolts are what I want to use on these applications. You're also going to need some die core sealant to keep that mounting system dry and to keep the moisture out as well as not let any rain or elements get through into your ceiling. Other considerations you may need is I used what are called ferrules. Ferrules go on the end of your wire to make it a clean connection to your solar charge controller and you're also going to need some terminal rings for your wires going to your battery. On your wire side that's going to go from the solar charge controller to the battery, I recommend using a 12 gauge minimum wire. You also are going to need what is called wire loom. Wire loom protects your wire from the elements. I will show you today in this video where I would put my wire loom. All right, and if you don't have one of these yet, this is a telescoping ladder. It's easy to store underneath, and you can also attach it to that bracket at the top here on your newer models. So let's go ahead and get up here and start the next portion of our install. Now it's important to make sure that you have a walkable roof before doing this. Always make sure prior to getting on a roof that it is a walkable surface. So as you can see here, I have already installed this solar panel. Unfortunately, I did this before deciding to move my channel into a more holistic realm of uh, you know DIY things other than my boating side. So this will be my first video on the RV. I will be doing a new video later on that's going to show you how I install my second solar panel. But for this video, this is instructional on how to set up your solar panel um, walkthrough. So the very first thing that I had to do was when you get your solar panel out of the box, um, it either comes with some brackets, these are called Z brackets. Um, as you see here, they kind of mount flat, go up, and then come back over to the panel, giving it some space underneath for some breath breathability. Now, I did this in my living room, got it prepped and ready. You want to make sure you do the same thing. Make sure that you plan out your um, install in your head prior to getting everything ready to go and getting it up here and not having a plan because it's going to save you a bunch of time and frustration in the future. So with mine, what I did is I pulled my solar panel out of the box, came with the brackets. This is the Furion 100 watt solar panel uh, that I got on sale from Camping World. Um, it was a great deal. I'm not sure if they still have it going on, but I will put links to all the products I used in the description below. So when I pulled it out of the box, it came with the Z brackets. Uh, what I had to do before that is get up here on my RV roof and find out the distances between my trusses because you want to mount these into trusses that are in your um, RV ceiling, RV roof, between the roof and the ceiling. 
So when I measured it out, I found out my distances, um, you know, refer to your own RV for this and, and find out your truss locations and your spacing. Once I figured that out, um, I mounted the Z brackets to where at least one of the mount bolts goes directly into a truss. Um, the trusses on these RVs tend to be smaller, um, so I don't believe on all Z brackets you're going to be able to get both um, lag bolts into the trusses. So what I did is I made sure that I had this forward one on both sides as my anchor point for the trusses. And then what I did was is I mounted my Z brackets with this forward mount hole at the distance between the two trusses that I wanted to mount into. And that's when I attached it to the solar panel. The next step I did was figure out where I wanted my solar panel. So I wanted my solar panel not to have any shadows casted by any other equipment on the RV roof. So that's gonna be things like your vents or your antennas, your vent stacks for your um, water slash sewer, um, ACs. So you wanna make sure that your solar panels are clear from any of that because what happens with that is they will cast a shadow uh, depending on where the sun is at. Um, as you can see here right now, if there was something like right here, it would be casting a shadow over my solar panel. So that would negate the total capacity of the solar panel and you wouldn't be getting the full array of power that you should. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Make sure you mount where you're not gonna have things casting shadows onto your solar panels. Another thing that I kept in mind is that I knew I wanted to add solar panels in the future. Hence the reason this one is off center because I'm gonna add another solar panel right here on this side, giving me a total of 200 watts. Now, when I do that, I will film it. Uh, that way you can see my install process and I'll take pictures. Um, but for this instance, right now, all we have is the fully installed panel. So when you go to install the panel, what you wanna do is you wanna find your truss locations and then you wanna pre-drill your hole to your lag bolt size. Um, with mine, I uh, used some roofing lag bolts that I had left over from my brother who works for construction in a roof and they were perfect for this mount system. I believe they were only about an inch and a quarter long, um, which gets me through the ceiling and uh, through the bracket with a good bite into the truss. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is go too long or too short. Too long, you're going to go through your ceiling into the interior of your RV too short and you're not going to get enough bite on that um, truss underneath the uh, RV um, roof. So once you figure out your specific lag bolt that you want to use or whichever hardware you tend to use for your installation, get that prepped and get a drill bit that is appropriate to that size. Uh, if you don't know how to size drill bits and it doesn't give you any instructions on that, the easiest way to do that is you want to take your drill bit and your lag bolt, place your drill bit over your lag bolt, and make sure that you can see teeth on both sides of that drill bit. That means that once you're done drilling, you'll be able to bite with the lag bolt into that wood. So your next step is going to be placement. What you wanna do is you wanna figure out how to make this look nice and flush. You've got your trusses marked out, so you know that. You've got, you, you know what you're gonna do in the future or what you're not gonna do in the future, but now you wanna make it look nice. So what I did is I measured from the edge of the roof to each corner of the panel to make sure they were completely even. That gives me a nice straight line and a nice even squared install. Um, just find a point of reference. You don't have to do it my way. Um, I use the edge of the ceiling. You can use anything else on your ceiling and take measurements, but I found it to be easiest just to measure from the edge of my ceiling at both corners of the solar panel and that's when I knew my solar panel was square and it's gonna look nice. Looking nice isn't as important as making sure you get your lag bolts into the truss. So if it's not gonna look nice, at least make sure that your lag bolts are into your trusses. All right, so the next step is we got the holes drilled and we've got our measurements, we've got our panel where we want it and we know our plan. The next thing's gonna be to go ahead and get that thing ready to be mounted to the ceiling. Uh, the way you want to do that is you want to get some um, uh, RV sealant, uh, Dicor is what most of us use. I will, again, links will be in the description below. But 
You want to make sure that you get trace out your Z brackets where you're going to mount it. And then you want to put some of that die cord down over top of that area that you just traced out to make sure it gets full coverage underneath the bracket on all four corners. And then you want to set your bracket down into that die core so that it seals underneath the bracket. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and start doing your lag bolts. And then once you get your lag bolts on, you want to come through and reseal over the top of the lag bolts. So now you have 360 degrees of full coverage on your sealant so that no water can intrude into your ceiling. All right, so now you have gotten everything done, your solar panels uh, installed, it's sealed, it's ready to go. The next step you gotta do is get your wiring done. So as you can see here, um, this is just temporary. I still got a wire loom it, but just as kept it off so that you guys can see for reference how I did the wiring. Um, so you've got your positive and negative coming out of your solar panel. On my model, it came um, solar prepped ready. So that means it had an MC4 connector through ceiling connector already installed. If you don't have one of these, um, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna either need to come down through an access on your ceiling, um, one of your accessories that you have up here already, or you can buy a through ceiling port like this one here. Uh, the Furion panel came with the through ceiling port, so if you don't have one, it's already there. Uh, and basically what you do is you're gonna drill a hole into your ceiling, you're gonna install that through over top of it and uh, seal it up. But specifically for these Coleman 17B, 17Rs, this is a 2025, they come solar prep ready with the MC4 connector already installed, ready to go on top. So all you have to do is get some MC4 connectors for the end of your solar panel. Um, some solar panels may come with it, um, a lot of them don't. And what you gotta do is you gotta install those MC4 connectors onto your positive and negative side of your solar panel. Another quick note is that when you do get ready to do the positive and negative, you want to assure yourself you know which side is positive and which side is negative. The easiest way to figure that out is down below on the wires that are in our forward storage compartment, there is going to be a two wire that says for your solar panel. Now to find out which side is positive and which side is negative, hook up a battery. Um, it can be a drill battery, it can be your 12 volt battery uh, that you have hanging around, but give it some kind of uh, current. What you'll do then is come back up to the roof and get up here and take your multimeter and test your ports. Put your probe in each port and find out, you know, if one, you're getting the voltage from the battery, because if you're not getting any voltage, then you may have a nicked wire or something wrong. But two, you're going to get a voltage with either no sign at all or a minus sign. Now, if you have no sign at all, that means that your positive is on your positive, your negative is on your negative. If you have the negative sign inside of that voltage reading, then that means that your positive is on your negative and your negative is on your positive. So now you're able to identify which one is your positive and negative. So that covers the basics up here. There are other little things like, you know, you know how to strap your wire down to keep it from flapping around on your ceiling. Some people use duct tape. I'm not that guy. Uh, what I did is I have some um, zip tie mounts that came with another kit install for LEDs that I did on my boat. So what I used was some of those and what I did is I um, sealed those to the roof and then once they dried overnight, I came up here and added zip ties to the cabling to keep it nice and secure. Now again, I'm going to cover this wire with wire loom to protect the wire from UV rays, um, but just make sure that you actually have it secured. But the next part, is going to be down below. So let me take you to that. All right, so your next step is going to be involving this piece right here. Now this is my Wanderer solar charge controller. Um, and this is already installed as well, but you can see your green and green black wires that I have over here. For those of you that are unsure which is positive and which is negative down here, your green is going to be your positive, your green black is going to be your negative coming from your solar panel. 
So what you'll do is you'll install your solar panel into your charge controller. Those wires that you had hiding behind this panel on the port side or driver side of your forward storage. That is going to go into your charge controller, positive and negative, and then you're going to need a positive and negative coming out of your charge controller and going back to your battery. Um, one of the things you want to think of, again, when you're using your charge controllers is which type of charge controller you want. Uh, MPPT are more efficient. Uh, that is true, but to me, the cost did not justify the um, advantage for me. So I went with a standard solar charge controller. Um, it has a temp sensor uh, capabilities. It also has a Bluetooth module that you can add to it. Again, I will link this in the description below. And this one is also capable of lithium flooded gel or sealed batteries. So I have all of those. Now, what you do is you get it wired into your charge controller. And like on my charge controller, you can see here, PV stands for the solar panel. And then BAT stands for the battery, obviously. Once you get those wired in there and you run your wires up to your battery up front, um, your system is going to be ready to go. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is hook up your um, solar panel prior to getting everything ready because once your solar panel is hooked up, it's producing electricity. Therefore, you could shock yourself. So the last thing you want to hook up is going to be those MC4 connectors up top for your solar panel. So get this wired all up and get it installed how you like it. Um, you can see what I did here. I uh, took a sheet of quarter inch plywood and I screwed it um, to my framing. That way it gave me a base for me to screw into for mounting all my electronics. You'll see here I have an inverter and a um, transfer switch. I will get to those in another video. But on this video, we're gonna focus on just the charge control yourself itself so that you can have solar power recharging your battery at all times. Again, this is pretty straightforward. You're gonna have your positive and negative going on your solar side and your positive and negative going on your battery side. Now, if you are looking for how you can get your um, positive and negative from this cabinet to your battery, you have two choices. Some people relocate their batteries inside the camper. I don't recommend that because if you have an issue with your battery um, and it catches fire, you're burning down your trailer. Whereas if your battery is outside your camper, then if it catches fire, less likely that you are going to burn down your camper. So let's go ahead and take a look underneath and see how I did it. All right, so as you see here, what I did is, uh, one, the thicker cables are for my inverter. Don't worry about those at this moment. Those red and black thinner cables are my solar charge controller wires. So what I did is I drilled a hole down through the deck and I ran the wires all the way up to the front to the battery. Um, what you see there is a lot of people call it silly putty, but it's a... Uh, it's a sealant you can pick up at any Home Depot, Lowe's, or on Amazon. Again, the link will be in my description below. And what that is, is you drill your hole just big enough for your wires to pass through. And then you seal that up nice and tight on both sides, the inside and the outside with that sealing putty. And then you're good to go. Um, no critters are going to get through, no water, no moisture. It is sealed tight. And if you're new to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out with getting more videos, more reviews, more installs, more tips and more tricks posted to the channel. Uh, hit that like button and then throw me a comment below. Tell me what you'd like to see next and any questions you may have about this, I always try to follow up with all my comments and make sure I get them answered within 24 to 48 hours.